Emily Bodie and thank you for joining me to find out more about the opportunities at VU in nursing and midwifery. Joining me today, we have Gaylene Boardman, who is the chair of our Bachelor of Nursing course. We have Katrina Carey, who is a midwifery lecturer. And we also have Karina Island, who is our self-directed learning labs lead and a midwifery lecturer. Thank you all so much for being here. No now, Gaylene, our Bachelor of Nursing is exceptionally popular yes. at VU. Yes, Tell us is. a little bit about what students can expect to learn. Oh, so many things. So we aim to get you ready to be a registered nurse. So you're going to learn lots and lots of skills and knowledge related to the body, how it functions, uh, different diseases and how to look after people who are ill. Wonderful. So quite expansive. Quite expansive. Are there any specialties or specialities that students can expect to, to learn or to be able to choose from? We have a range of specialities. They can uh, learn about acute care nursing, mental health nursing, uh, perioperative nursing, paediatric nursing, and they'll learn about community nursing. So a range of different areas within nursing that they might want to specialise with in the future. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, Katrina, we're one of the few institutions that offer a double degree in nursing and midwifery. What else can students expect to learn as part of the midwifery and qualification with nursing? So we are really lucky at VU um, to have the dual degree and it's a four year degree. Um, and we build right at the beginning and we scaffold with foundational subjects for both nursing and midwifery. And then um, as the years go by, it becomes more comprehensive. So things like working with evidence and um, complications of the newborn, complex midwifery um, alongside aligning with the nursing subjects as well. And something we get asked all the time, Gaylene, is some information about our industry partners or where students might have the opportunity to do placements. Can you give us some insights into that? Certainly. Uh, the students go everywhere in the metropolitan region as well as rural placements. So often in their uh, nursing course, they'll have at least one rural placement and that could be in Gippsland or Warrnambool. But the majority of placements are within Melbourne and they might go to Western Health is one of our main partners, Werribee Mercy, the Royal Melbourne, St Vincent. And so a lot of our larger tertiary hospitals take our students for placement. Students can also go to community uh, organisations where they might work in the prison um, or they might work at a, a GP surgery. So lots of different options for students. Yeah, certainly some very different, differentiating opportunities there for students. Absolutely. And they can work in surgery, they might work on a medical ward, they might go to, they'll go to a mental health um, service as well. So lots of different areas. So placements are once the students have kind of got a bit of an idea about the basics of nursing before we put them into a placement position, what kind of things can students expect to do as part of a placement? Well, in first year, they do their foundations, as uh, Katrina mentioned. So they'll learn about washing a patient, taking some um, BPs, temperature checks, and then they'll go on a maybe an aged care placement where they'll learn to do the basic nursing care of someone. And then it's scaffolded throughout the course. So every year they'll have a placement and, and most years they'll have two placements. And each placement is a bit different. And the expectation for the student at each placement, you know, for example, in second year, they'll go to acute care or a mental health placement and they'll look after people who are unwell and they'll work with a registered nurse and they'll mentor them through their placement. Sounds like an exciting thing to do. A lot of opportunity to grow and learn on the job and yeah. build in some of those skills that you're learning in the classroom as well. Absolutely. Wonderful. Now we're going to check in with Wade Spencer, who is standing by at VU's Sunshine Clinical School, located at the Sunshine Hospital, where he's going to show us around some of our state-of-the-art nursing simulation labs. Are you there, Wade? Thanks, Emily. My name is Wade Spencer and I'm from VU Sport. Right now we're in the nursing simulation lab at the Sunshine Clinical School. If you have a look up on this screen, this is this observation area where students can observe their peers. Once the lights are dimmed, it really gives you an insight to what's in this space. We're going to head in now, we're going to chat to Sky and she's going to tell us a little bit more about what's the offer and what the students can experience from being in an area like this. So Sky, thanks for being here today. Do you just want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at the university? Yeah, sure. Thanks for coming. My name's Sky. I'm the manager of health simulation here at VU. And right now you're in one of our state-of-the-art simulation suites. Fantastic. And look, I've just noticed as I've walked in that this mannequin or doll, whatever you 
mannequin, of, mannequin uh, is blinking. Does, yes. the, does the mannequin have a name and, and what types of things does this, this mannequin do? So our mannequins are quite high tech. Um, they can basically mimic any kind of physiological reaction or any kind of skill that our nurses or midwives will need to do when they're out in the real world. So simulated learning here at our VU is a contextualised experiential learning activity. So once the students have learnt their theory, uh, they've practised their skills in the labs, they come into a space like this that's contextualised to mimic reality. So we can um, have a whole range of different scenarios or patients' presentations that students get to practise in a safe environment um, and learn from them before they go out on clinical placement. So just interested to know, does the mannequin breathe? Yes, so she, uh, Stevie at the moment, you can see if you look quite closely, her chest is going yeah, up wow. and down. She's blinking. I was just having a listen to her chest sound. She's very healthy. She's about to go home. And if you, Wade, want to just have a little palpate yeah. on her wrist there, you might be able just to feel her pulse. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah. It feels real. Yeah. So we can control these mannequins. They've got a computer inside um, and we can change all the variables for whatever type of presentation. So um, if, if um, Stevie became unwell, our students might need to do CPR on her and they get to practice those high risk skills in a really safe environment and that prepares them to go out and be ready for workplace. Just incredible. And how often would students get to be in this space like this during their time? So this space at Sunshine Clinical School is for our third and fourth year students. It opened earlier this year. We've got very similar um, simulation suites over at St Albans and our students will start going into simulation in their first year a couple of times and then that will go, they'll go in more frequently um, as they go on out on more acute placements. Well, and I know Stevie's one of the mannequins. Mm -hmm. um, what other mannequins do we have or real life experience that students get involved in? So this uh, mannequin here is one we use for nursing. We've also got something similar um, called Sim Mum for our midwifery students. So they get to practice giving birth. So that simulation, our sim simulator can actually birth a baby. And then we have a neonatal simulator that can do a lot of the same things and the students get to practice what they would do with a newborn. Just such an incredible space. We want to thank you, Sky, for your time. Um, and what an awesome place for students to learn. Back to you, Emily, in the studio. Thanks, Wade. It really is an amazing facility and what a great opportunity for our students. Uh, with us, we, of course, have Karina, who is our self-directed learning lab lead. So, Karina, give us a bit of an understanding about what the self-directed learning labs are and what other facilities our students have access to. Yeah, so we're very lucky at VU that we've got the state-of-the-art simulation and uh, nursing laboratories. And what that means is that we've got areas where students can practice skills and really put into practice the knowledge that they're learning in their course. So that means that students get the opportunity to work with mannequins, to do things such as taking blood, taking blood pressures, we have mannequins that can breathe and that can talk and that can bleed. And we've got mannequins that can give birth as well as small baby mannequins. So we're very lucky with this area that students get this opportunity to really practice in a safe way um, before they go out on clinical placement. So they get the opportunity to practice um, you know, under direction of uh, the teaching labs. But we also have the self-directed learning labs and what they are is an area where students can go and practice independently. They can practice their skills with each other or on their own and they can do that as many times as they want in their own time. And that gives them so much more confidence when they go out on clinical placement. Um, and we know that students do so much better then on clinical placement because they've had so much opportunity to practice. So yeah, we're very lucky at VU with all the equipment that we have and the spaces that we use. So one of the unique opportunities that we have at Victoria University is the block model. So imagining those smaller classes lead to much more time that students are able to have in those self-directed learning labs and with those responsive mannequins as well. Yes, definitely. I think the block model really um, helps students to uh, be able to use some of their time studying and then a lot of their free time then they can use the labs and practice the skills that they've been taught. And that means that they can gain so much more confidence before they go out on clinical placement. Wonderful. And so some of those responsive baby mannequins, Katrina, that must be quite exciting to see. Can you give us a little bit of an insight into what it's like to actually watch one of those live birth simulations and have one of those baby mannequins as well as part of the midwifery course? It's really, um, I guess, changed the way that um, teaching occurs and uh, can give the students the best possible um, 
opportunity to as close to life as possible know what it's like to uh, witness a baby being born so that the first time they actually see that it's not completely foreign to them. Um, these mannequins um, that are you know, had the women, they will actually um, make noises and they'll talk, the babies will cry. Um, and so this actually sends them in a unique way off to placement, feeling much more prepared. Fantastic. So unsurprisingly, we had a large number of questions submitted by future students or potential students at the university. Gaylene, I might take the first question and direct it to you. Does the Bachelor of Nursing have an ATAR entry requirement? It does, and uh, from 2021, uh, students would need an ATAR of 65. Yeah. Wonderful. And I understand that there's also a, um, an ATAR for our Bachelor of Nursing, Bachelor of Midwifery double degree. Katrina, what are we looking at for that particular course? So our last year um, clearly in school was 80 for the dual Bachelor of Midwifery and Nursing degree. Fantastic. So Gaylene, there, we do get a number of questions from potential students or future students asking or who aren't necessarily sure whether or not they were interested in nursing, midwifery, both or in paramedicine as well. Are there any units that are shared between nursing and paramedicine or any similarities or major differences between those courses? There are a couple of units that are the same. So a lot of the bioscience units are the same. So students can get some credit. So if, there's, if they enter the Bachelor of Nursing and they might do the first year and decide they want to transition over to paramedicine, there is the option for that. There's a few units that will allow them to transition across. And do we see students starting off in the Bachelor of Nursing and then potentially transferring into the double degree? We've had some students go from the dual degree to nursing uh, when they've sort of decided that they didn't really want to do midwifery. So we have had, and that's an easy transition across because there's a lot of similar units. And certainly if students in nursing wanted to transition to the dual degree midwifery, there's lots of similarity in units and, and yeah, so they'll be able to get credit to do that. Fantastic, so a little bit of flexibility offered Absolutely. there for the courses. Uh, now, another question potentially for you, Katrina, um, something that we get asked all the time and it's a really important part of all of our courses, placements and internship opportunities. So how does placement work, in, placement, sorry, work during the dual degree? Is it something that we assist the students with or, or what's set up to help them as part of this requirement? Absolutely. So um, placement is a really critical component of consolidating the theoretical learning and their opportunity to be in labs and simulations. It brings it all together. So we've got some fantastic clinical partners. So similar to what Gaylene said earlier, um, they will do nursing placements um, and they will be rural and metropolitan. Um, but they also obviously have midwifery placements. So in the dual degree, they start right in the first semester. Um, and they go off on a small two-day placement for midwifery, which is an observational placement. And then they do a week of nursing placement, which is often in aged care. So just, you know, building from the beginning. And then over time, they will go into the different specialties. Um, there's an offer to, to uh, have placement with midwifery group practice, um, an opportunity potentially for home birth um, for students to witness that. Um, from their perspective and buddy up with another midwife. Um, and so uh, there is many placements because we know that the more opportunity that students have to actually uh, practice what they are learning theoretically, the stronger that they are as graduates when they, when they come out of their course. So off the back of discussing the new ATAR requirements for a Bachelor of Nursing and the existing ATAR requirements for our double degree, there's been a couple of questions about alternative ways to enter those courses if year 12 students aren't achieving the marks that they need to for direct entry. So Karina, I might ask you about what you see as some alternative entry pathways that can get students to where they want to in either the Bachelor of Nursing or the double degree. Sure, in uh, the double degree of being a midwifery, if students haven't quite achieved the ATAR that they require or aren't successful in being offered a place, um, there are a couple of ways that they could um, potentially get into the course. One of them would be to um, do a diploma of nursing um, and then apply for credits as well once they're, in, uh, once they're accepted into the course. Um, the other way would be to uh, apply for the Bachelor of Nursing and um, uh, after the first year, they could apply then for the dual degree and they would then commence the dual degree in first year, but with some credits for the course. Mm -hmm. 
And Gaylene, I might ask you from your perspective, uh, how students might find the best entry point into Bachelor of Nursing? Certainly, if they can't get the ATAR score, then we encourage students to apply for the Diploma of Nursing. So the Diploma of Nursing is a two year course. And after you do that course, you're guaranteed entry if you're a VU Polytechnic student, you can go straight into the Bachelor of Nursing into the second year, and then you'll do another two years. And often this is a great choice for a lot of students because once they've finished the diploma, they become an enrolled nurse. And that means that they can work as an enrolled nurse as well as studying. Um, so it's great, they earn a bit of money and also get to continue with their studies. Yeah, great opportunity to Absolutely. get your foot in the door as well in terms yeah. of employment. Great experience. So you mentioned as well, enrolled nurse, registered yes. nurse. Can you give yes. us some insights into what the difference there might be and what the benefit of doing the bachelor um, once you've completed the diploma might be? There's a lot more opportunities for a registered nurse and a registered nurse can work across a range of areas. They can work throughout of, out Australia and they can travel. You know, so it gives students a larger amount of places they can work. The enrolled nurse, there is a limited scope of practice and often an enrolled nurse tends to work in aged care, some GP clinics, uh, sort of subacute areas. The career path is not as good as a registered nurse. They can't move on. So a registered nurse can end up being a unit manager. They can be a nurse practitioner. They might go on to education, research. Um, and obviously the pay scales increase as, as you go up each level. So a lot more career opportunities um, for them. Great. I think that's a great bit of clarification as well for yeah. students who are tossing up whether a diploma or a bachelor degree might be the right starting point for them. And some students really want to be an enrolled nurse and they're happy to, to stay at that level. Others, of course, are more keen to have a, a career. Beautiful. Well, that just about brings us to the end of our time together. I'd like to thank you, Gaylene, Katrina and Karina for spending some time with me and answering my questions and our audience's questions about their opportunities in nursing and midwifery. I think we've heard some really great insights as to what opportunities are available for students and what they can actually get to learn on campus, as well as what they can learn in our self-directed learning labs and with our responsive mannequins. So thank you so much for sharing your time with me. And thank you so much for tuning in and the best of luck with your future studies at BU.